When you're in the recording studio, top three things you need. My drink. I need my drink. When I'm in the studio, I need yes. my drink. I need a backwood, probably like the five pack Russian cream or the honey berry. And if I'm feeling lucky, a 30. But yeah, that's what I carry anyway. Okay, so let's break some of these elements down. <laughs> What's the 30 for? I mean, the one that's on me. For your top three recording studios. No, 30 that's on me. The 30 that's on me is for mo not motivation. I say not influence. I say like, I don't know, man. I just be like geeked up. Like, I ain't gonna lie, I took an Adderall before this. Like, I just be like, you know what I'm saying? So like, I take a 30, it's, it's the same in the studio. Like, I be gone. Like, I just go. I, I feel like personally, like, the best music comes. But like, I could be wrong to be honest. Like, I think, yeah, I think the best like rap music I make come out when I'm on the 30, personally. Yeah, full disclosure, ain't nobody knew that. And what's a 30, a Percocet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the Backwoods, that's for marijuana? For sure. What does marijuana do for you exactly? I mean, like, more so relaxed, bro, because, like, I ain't really have, like, social anxiety. I ain't never really had, like, social anxiety, but, like, when you make a switch over to, like, a whole nother, like, situation, like, shit different, bro, like, it's different. So, like, when, like, you going hard, bro, like, for, especially for days, like, you need to, like, relax, you feel me? Like, you just got to have something to relax. That's how I feel. Is it a specific strain for you when it comes to marijuana? For sure. What's it called? Um, probably some. What's it called? On my like day to day, probably Purple Punch. If I'm on some, I just got here. And they talking about some avalanche, but we we legal up up, up north. So on the day to day on up north, I'm on Obama runs. You feel me? Like that's straight up. And what are you referencing when you say up north? DC. Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Yeah. Ever consumed a fake version of marijuana? You mean like synthetic marijuana? Yes. Fuck no. Who smoked that? I don't smoke that, guys. Don't smoke fake weed. That's not good for your, for your lungs. And when it comes to marijuana, is this for medical purposes or recreational for you? Probably both. Have you ever been prescribed by a professional or self-prescribed? Self-prescribed. Respectfully, I ask you this. Huh? Are you addicted to marijuana? Can you be? Um, am I? Probably. For free. <laughs> Probably. Then I, yeah, because I went to smell like five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then, Go ahead. I mean, like, I'm like, I say like, yeah, cause like, you need it, but like, I ain't no like, you feel me, like addict type shit. You feel me? It's a difference. I wanted to back up a little bit when it came to Percocet, cause I didn't get a chance to ask you all the questions I wanted to. Sure. So I'm gonna back up to that. But when it comes to Percocet, you already explain what it does for you. Ever consumed a fake version of Percocet? A fake perk. <laughs> this man is so funny, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I wouldn't be a gremlin if I if I didn't. So yeah. <laughs> How did you know you had a fake perk? And just ask, bro. I mean, and honestly, like when you in the game, bro, you know what the difference is. Like I done seen real jumps, and then I didn't see you. You can tell. What it is, for real. Real perks don't bust down. Fake perks bust down, for sure. How did your body react to a fake perk versus the real thing?
<laughs> this man's so funny. Uh, what's it called? Like, I mean, was there a difference that you noticed? Oh fuck yeah, I almost died, low key. I ain't even gonna lie. Like, I almost died. Like, but now I stay scrapped up with not can. So I don't be dying no more. I be chilling. <laughs> Care to take the viewers to that moment? I mean, like, just don't do drugs, kids. It's not good. Like, it's not good for you. Cause you could die. For sure. And you would never be here with DJ Smalls. When you did have that moment where you almost died, you you knew you had a fake perk on purpose, like you purposely knew you were you had that, or but I still ate it because I'm a gremlin. Yeah, I knew, I knew for sure. Like I don't, I don't really like. I used to be an addict, bro. Like before I started this, but like this, like rap shit for sure. But like I don't really be like I wasn't really tripping like at all. Like when you do that shit, like you don't really be tripping. But like I don't, I don't really be on the addict shit no more. Like. I just be getting my money. Like, I'm gonna get it to my money more than anything, for sure. Reflecting back, when you said you used to be an addict, are we talking about Percocet specifically, or was it a different drug you were addicted to? Man, an addict is an addict is an addict. <laughs> you feel me? It could be, it could be that. It could be anything for real, how I feel, you know? I was just curious for clarification. I mean, yeah, yeah, so like, I ain't really start 30s to like 28, 17, like 17, but like, yeah, I can't say too much else cause like, yeah, I got other shit pending. <laughs> okay, so I'll stop the questions there with the Percocet. May I ask you questions about lean? I don't give a damn. What does lean do for you exactly? For sure, I mean, the drink, that's a good question. Like, I be chilling on a drink. It's the same thing like like my gas. Like, when I'm drinking my sip, I be chilling, like, booling. I feel like I be on go so much, cause like, I just be like, go, 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 go. But like, now when I'm on my drink, I just be relaxing. Like, I don't got to worry about nothing. Is it a specific type of prescription cough medicine brand? Uh,. I used to fuck with WAP like in 2017, like in 2017, 2018, we was fucking with WAP. You feel me about a pint? But like, nah, I don't be fucking with WAP. I fuck with like light, light, what I call like beer, Trish. Yeah, that Trisha. Ever consumed a fake version of lean? Um, no, mister. I done seen fake, you know what I'm saying? Like, by the caseload, but like, that shit weird. Cause like, let me tell you something, niggas be so desperate to get some money, bro. Like, I done seen like niggas in the trap, like, unscrew that bitch, all kind of shit. Like, from the bottom. You feel me? Like, it's a whole method to science, to like, method, what they call it, method to madness. To, but that shit crazy, bro. So you really gotta watch who you getting from. Like, you gotta have like a trusted partner. And if you don't got that, then you might as well not be buying it or a doctor. And speaking of a doctor, for you, when it comes to lean, is that uh, something that started with, from medical purposes? No, like, no. I mean, maybe, cause like, it was like COVID when I started to be heavy, but like, no, nah, not for sure. Cause like, <laughs> That's funny and shit. Nah, bro, like, we was, I only really be, for medical purposes, no, bro, like, no, not at all. I be sipping for recreational purposes, period. But I guess, and I'm, I apologize for any confusion, maybe I should reword that question. Did it start out as medical purposes with prescription cough medicine? No. Okay. Not at all. And the reason why I ask is because I have interviewed people in the past where they are medically prescribed a drug and they <laughs> grow an addiction to it and type shit. it blossoms from there. So True. I was just curious if it was recreational from the jump for you or maybe it did start medically and then. I wish, boy, tell me what. I mean, we know doctors, but like, I wish that hoe was recreational. I mean, like, I mean, medical, how I get it like that CVS was out. 
And respectfully, I ask you this. Are you addicted to lean? Not no more. I will, not no more. I spend my money on that. Like, I just spend like $2,500 on lean alone. <laughs> so, no, no more. And that's in a week's time, in a month's time? No, in a day or two. <laughs> you funny as hell. Nah, I made my first 10 bands, man. I made my first 10 bands and spent it on Lean and Zans. I'm not kidding. In like less than three days. I had like, I think like a hundred and like two dollar bills and like the whole city had two dollar bills in less than three days. Do you use any other drugs recreationally? No. Not no more. Now, initially, I asked you top three things in top three things you need in the studio, and you said lean, backwoods for marijuana, and you mentioned Percocet. For sure. Are you using all three at the same time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I got to. Now, when it comes to smoking, has that ever been an issue for you in the studio? In the studio? As far as recording, vocally, things of that nature? Never that. I don't really care, because, like, we still got shit to make it sound good. And, like, my fans fuck with it regardless. So, like, I don't really be tripping. And you do record under the influence of drugs and drug-free as well. And sober, yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you decide? Depends. Just depends on, like, what my week and day was feeling like prior to going to the booth. Like, if I, if I had a bad, if I had a bad week, then I'm... If I had a bad week, then I'm not finna, or fuck, if I had a bad week, then I'm finna get loaded. Like, I'm finna be, yeah, yeah, I'm finna be drinking. I might have a 30, I might have like two 30s for real, and I also might have like a couple woods on me. But if I had a good week, then I'm chilling, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't feel like I need it, you feel me? Like, if, you know what I'm saying? Cause like, yeah. I feel like it's gonna like mess up my pace, especially if I'm doing straight, you feel me? Like, I'm cooling. I don't really want it right now. When you first started recording as a recording artist, did it start off drug-free for you or did it start off under the influence from the very beginning? Depends on what under the influence is. Cause like, I was smoking, I was smoking, I was smoking when I, before I started recording for real. So like, it was, it was something that came with the music. Like, it wasn't something that the music came with, it was something that came with the music for real. Or I came. Yeah. <laughs> so for you, when there would be times you would record drug-free mm. or create drug-free, was that just natural experimentation or was that influenced by any chance? Was it, hold on, oh, shit. was it experiments when I record drug-free? Yeah. Or make that decision? Yes. So uh -huh. if you started off recording as a recording artist from the very beginning of your career under the influence of oh. a drug. <clears throat> I see what you're saying. I mean, I don't know, I'm smack. I mean, like, look, bro, like how I feel like is like, it was, it's either like I'm going to or I'm not like, I don't know, like how do I make that decision? I don't know, like, like for real, like, how how I work on on that side of the city is like, bro. I feel like I don't know. Like I feel like where I'm at, like shit come often, but not often enough. Cause like everybody gets shut down. So like if it's here, like I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna do it. You feel me? But like if it's not, then you feel me. But if I got loads of it, or I'm just chilling on it, I'm making that decision is just real subtle. It's just like a, a on the whim situation. I wing it for the night. You feel me? The reason why I ask this is because you mentioned you were already a smoker before you started recording and becoming a recording artist. So I didn't know if it was one of those scenarios where maybe you're a smoker, you smoke all the time when you're in the studio and you say to yourself, uh, and you say to yourself, hold on, you say to yourself, 
you know what? Let me try this studio today drug-free and see how the music is. <laughs> or maybe you were influenced in some sort of manner. Maybe you saw, uh. <laughs> maybe you saw another person say, hey, I record drug-free and I made a hit song, so maybe that's something you wanted to try. I made a hit song. That's funny as fuck. Nah, that's funny as hell. Nah, people say that, like, you need, you need A, B, C, and D to make a hit. No, you don't. Like shit, you don't. I mean... No, nah, I don't think you do. Like, to be honest, I smoke on a daily basis. I smoked on the way here. That's part of the reason why I was late, because my Uber driver wanted to smoke. But I'm like, nigga, you supposed to be fucking, you know what I'm saying? But I, it's a natural thing, for real. So like, but when, I, when, I'm off a, when I'm off of 30, like, I don't know. It's just off a of whim kind of situation. I be chilling. It don't make nothing better in my in my sense, in my aspect. Like it don't make me make a hit song. Like that don't got shit to do with it. I've learned already. That shit that shit don't got you can have a trash ass song and make it a hit song, bro. Let me tell you that. I don't even like to make music for real, but you can have an ass song and make and make a hit. I'm saying, like, I know there's motherfuckers that got better songs than me and not sitting in the seat right now though. That but that's for a reason. You see what I'm saying? Now, when it comes to you being in the recording studio, do you notice a difference when you're under the influence of some sort of drug versus drug-free? Sometimes, like, it just depends how, like, blocked up I am mentally. Like, if I got a lot going on and, like, I'm just, oh, like, oh, like, not literally, oh, damn, but, like, over, like, just, oh, damn, like, I got a lot of shit going on. Like, I'm not gonna get a song done. And typically in that case, when like, I don't wanna get no songs done, like I typically just throw them all away. Um, I don't really like finished songs. Like I got 50 songs that's just throwaways right now. Cause like, they just yeah, not done. Let me rephrase that question. Huh? Let me rephrase that question. Do you notice any difference in your music? Oh. Under the influence of a drug versus drug free. Sometimes it's a little bit more coherent. <laughs> it's a lot more coherent. Sometimes, sometimes like sometimes it'd be like a little less coherent, and we gotta like take it over again and shit. You feel me? But other than that, it's not like a big difference or like a style change or anything. I feel like when I'm on a thirty, if anything, like I'll be rapping more, but like there's not a huge difference. So when you say you're a little more coherent, that's when you're drug free. Yeah, like it's a little bit more like I'm like you could actually like hear the enunciation, and like I don't really say like it's like slurred or anything, but like some folks don't really like understand, especially with my accent already. So it's like you feel me, like it's yeah. What's been your biggest song so far in your music career? So far? Yes. Out of your catalog, what's been your biggest song so far? As of 2022, today? Yes, as of right now, this moment. What's been your biggest song so far? Rerock. Was that created or recorded under the influence of a drug or drug-free? That's a good question. Uh, so probably because I don't remember, I was definitely probably geeked up off that. Yeah, I actually think I was uh, leaning off that song, for real. Yeah. For sure. Because that's your biggest song so far, and you were under the influence of a drug, does that encourage you to creating more music under lean or under <laughs> the influence of a drug because that's your biggest song so far? No. Nah, no, I still tell kids don't do drugs. If you can help it. <laughs> Has anyone in the music industry, and when I say music industry, it could be, for example, an advisor, a consultant, a manager, a record label rep, encourage or discourage your drug use? Nope. Like, you make your own decisions, bro. I'm grown. You feel me? Like, I got my own money. Like, it's not like other niggas is taking money in my pocket. Oh, you gotta spend this on this. I'm grown, I make my own money, spend my own money. 
Ja. Have you ever made an actual song about marijuana or about lean or about Percocet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, check me, 2019. What was the reaction to that song? That was one of my biggest hits before Rewrite. And I mean, like, on the SoundCloud level, before I deleted, like, SoundCloud, that was one of the, that was one of the hardest songs people fuck with. It's Check Me. And, like, that was under the influence, too. 